Welcome to this podcast series on The Game Changers, from radical idea to innovative business. Are you wondering how deep tech startups move out of the lab and successfully to market? This series may help to address some of your questions. I am your host, Aoife Mangan. And in this series, I interview technology experts from fascinating industries, including space, construction, energy, health, you name it. In each episode, we will meet with a program manager from the European Innovation Council, which is also known as the EIC, and listen to their experiences scaling up European deep tech. In case you haven't heard of it, the EIC is Europe's flagship innovation program supporting university-based tech projects and game-changing tech companies. Today, we are talking about the future of the construction industry, which unfortunately emits 10% of all carbon dioxide, therefore urgently requires our attention and a rethinking of the materials that we use. Luckily, great innovations are being planned in research labs across Europe. Here to talk to us about fascinating new projects and the creation of a more sustainable construction sector is Frank Moen. He's an EIC program manager, as I mentioned, with expertise in technology scouting and venture building for the construction sector of the future. Also with us is an EIC-funded entrepreneur, Adi Talela, who is CEO of Createrra Earth Technologies. A warm welcome to you both. Frank, let's start with you. Could you describe your role as an EIC program manager? Yeah, of course. But first of all, thank you for uh, inviting me. I think the role of PM involves quite a lot. It's really to bridge the gap between scientific discovery and the wider commercial adoption. I think the PM is in the middle of this playing field, engaging with many stakeholders. And we're often acting as a catalyst. Now, one important tool the PMs have is to design the challenges for the work program together with these communities. So the scientific communities, the venture capital communities and the industry. So with scientists, we try to find the cutting edge and then design these challenges around this. And we aim with these challenges to direct entrepreneurial activities in directions which we think are important. So the PM have an instrumental goal in guiding these challenges through the decision-making process within the European Commission. Another important activity is the so-called proactive management of the projects and startups that receive the EIC funding. So, for example, by building interconnected portfolio of uh, startups, we increase, we aim to increase the value of the whole. But we can also try to help startups with uh, the needs they might have in contacts or business support or connections to investors. So basically, practically about half our time, we engage with outside stakeholders like science, entrepreneurs, corporates and investors. And the other time, we sp- uh, half of the time we spent internally with ISMEA supporting the various projects and the startups inside the programs of uh, Pathfinder Transition and Accelerator. Thank you, Frank. And can you tell us a bit more about your role as a program manager specifically for the construction sector? And maybe describe to us a little bit about how you envisage the future of the construction industry. Yeah, I think traditionally the, the, the sector is the second largest sector in Europe, but traditionally uh, the, the research funding and attention it received is not uh, proportional. So my role as program manager within the EIC is also to build up this flywheel and give it momentum. Uh, so my vision really for the future of the sector, maybe first I need to reflect on three major problems the sector I have to solve uh, and my vision follows from that. So first is really the reduction of CO2 emissions. So you mentioned in the introduction that we emit 10% of the total. So if the sector were a country, it would be the third largest emitter of the world, right? So, and that's only the materials. If you also include the use of the buildings, then this can go up to 25% or even more uh, of the total. Uh, the second biggest problem, a uh, big problem in construction is that um, it's the only sector lagging or even declining its productivity. And it has to do a lot with um, digitization technologies. But we need to make many transitions in our societies, right? So also, for example, renewable energies. And we need a lot of people to do actually execute those uh, ideas. So the construction sector will need to compete people with the other sectors. And this is really the topic of productivity. Now, the third and last problem is we really need to be mindful about the sheer volume and the size uh, of this sector. So the consumption of materials is huge. I mean, concrete is the second largest used material after water in the world. Now, I envision a future, uh, coming back to your question, where uh, construction uh, has solved, of course, all these uh, 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 problems and it becomes a sector where people are attracted to work for now in the end i don't want to get too philosophical but it boils down to creating a circular economy for the construction sector 
Um, and we are still, I realize, we are still far from that. But a couple of initiatives at European Commission level that uh, guide us uh, in this uh, uh, mission. And that's, for example, the new European Green Deal, so net zero by 2050, but also the renovation wave. So not only focusing on new bu builds, but also the huge existing aging building stock we have. And last but not least, um, and really important for me is the initiative of the new European Bauhaus, which really aims to convey a vision and a spirit of beautiful, sustainable and together. Because I read somewhere that uh, science changes the way how we view things and engineering changes the way how we experience the world. But design and art change how we experience ourselves. So these three initiatives, New Year, New Green Deal renovation wave, but also the new European Bauhaus are very important for me. Very exciting. And, uh, and how can these very ambitious goals be achieved? And more specifically, how can the EIC help to achieve these goals? Uh, so reduce CO2 emissions, increase productivity and reduce waste and material consumption. I think the sector needs to make a couple of transitions or fundamental changes. And I will, I will name a couple of them. So I think, first of all, we need to change the way we design buildings and infrastructure to use less and alternative materials. And second of all, we need to change the way we fabricate and assemble rather than uh, build on site and also to enable new materials. And third, I think we need to change the materials we use so we um, uh, emit less emissions. And I think Aditel will tell us more about that later because that's really part of her mission. So cement and concrete will be difficult to fully displace, considering just the sheer volume um, and the very low cost I mentioned before. So in addition to that, we also need to make changes in cement and in the cement production as well. Now, finally, I also think we need to change the way we use buildings because the building have a life cycle of 50, 60, 70, 80 years or longer, right? And it involves a lot of energy to do that. Now, some say that um, the construction sector is uh, notoriously uh, conservative, and I, I, I admit I agree, but um, I, it is really deeply entrenched in the way it does things. So to really to successfully make these transitions I mentioned before, we basically need to do two things. We need to say goodbye to the past, and we have to embrace a desired new future. So I, I think it was, I believe it was the circumnavigating balloonist Bertrand Picard who gave this metaphor of ballooning by saying, you know, innovation comes as new ideas, as well as old beliefs we throw overboard as ballast. And I think that's uh, what we have to do in the construction industry as well. So to leave the past, we can ha be helped by new regulations, new norms, new standards, for example. The new European Green Deal is a major game changer in our sector. And to embrace the future, this is where e uh, innovation and the EIC come in. So we need many brave innovators and entrepreneurs that start building the future we desire and need. But this is a very tough journey. Uh, and I think uh, Edita will uh, agree with me on this. And the EIC will really will do our best to support the uh, entrepreneurs in doing this. So again, I think the, the EIC may, tries to make this bridge between excellent scientific work, uh, which is really all over, and the wider commercial adoption by um, entrepreneurship. So we really want to help the, uh, the, the visionary entrepreneurs succeed. And that's why, you know, the, the, the mission statement is uh, backing visionary entrepreneurs. Uh, specific for construction, it um, also means that we um, we have to build up the attention and, and the awareness of the area within the within the community. Uh, so we have to build up this flywheel and uh, give it momentum. Fantastic, Frank. Thank you for your very clear explanations. Now let's turn to whom you described as a brave woman with a promising new solution to our challenges, Aditalela founder and CEO of Crietera, which is the mission to introduce construction products with the lowest carbon footprint possible without compromising on quality. Adital, welcome and thank you for being here. Could you please describe what your company does and what inspired you to create it? Yes, uh, with pleasure and uh, thank you for having me and it's wonderful to hear uh, your words, uh, Frank. Uh, so I will start by sharing that I grew up in the world of construction. I was the second generation to a family of builders. And later on, I did a master's in uh, sustainability design. And as a researcher in this field, I was inspired uh, to rethink how the building material um, market could uh, shift and how I myself could impact the critical shift it clearly has to go through. My scientific mission is to produce constructive building products while eliminating the destructive practice of firing minerals. So no firing in the precast building market 
would save over five gigatons of emissions each year. And this mission led me to found Createra. Createra develops zero waste, low carbon, truly circular construction products. Our products are tiles, masonry blocks, and claddings. And this is only the beginning. Our products are as strong as concrete. They are six times more thermal than concrete, and yet they are produced while saving 80% of the emissions and 90% of the energy. My inspiration came from researching materials and construction technologies in other cultures and rethinking them from a scientific and technological mindset. A unique product from India that was a profound trigger to my imagination was the sun-dried clay cups. These are cups that are produced on a wheel from clay at the edge of, a, of the village, and then they are sun-dried. So after you use them, you drink your uh, drink, and then you throw them immediately back to the ground. So from ground to product to ground immediately. No collection systems, no very uh, advanced uh, recycling, truly pure circularity. And this was a moment in the year 2000. And in that moment, I decided that one day I would create a technology that holds this pure circularity while enabling durable, effective products. And this is Createra. Very interesting. Thank you. And, and can you tell us how the EIC has supported you in your quest to make sustainable construction products? So uh, as uh, Frank also uh, uh, noted, it is critical to note that innovation in, in an area such as construction uh, materials is impossible without uh, financing. If we want to leverage the ability of new thinkers to challenge the industrial approaches that are so prevalent today, this requires uh, support. Otherwise, innovation will be only up to the large market players, and they are heavily vested in the infrastructure that they already have, which commonly relies on the most polluting processes. So commonly, they would try to do things that are less bad, but won't think from the beginning, from a fresh new start. And this will be a very slow process and will only create uh, incremental changes. So new, new entrepreneurs like ourselves can really rethink and re-engineer the whole process and introduce dramatic changes. And this is what we need to accelerate new climate solutions. Kiatea was very lucky to be awarded a substantial grant and equity financing from the EAC. This was a dramatic enabler for us, and it filled a critical role in getting our products to the market and achieving market readiness. In our case, the grant supported our wall tiles, which developed from TRL6 to a fully market-ready product under the grant period. This enabled us to sign our first commercial and license agreements and have installations in Europe, in Asia, and growing. I believe that Createra is a successful example of taking early stage innovation and bringing it to industrialization. Through the project, we also created a scientific foundation for additional precast products. So the grant is critical, but it is not enough. In the case of products, as opposed to software, it takes time and money to build manufacturing capacity. So the revenues are a few years away from market readiness. This is where the equity support becomes very critical. It has the role in filling the gap until financing from revenues is available. Piatel was very fortunate to be in the first cohort that was awarded blended financing. This is an amazing tool. But we do believe that the EIC has to adapt the eligibility conditions to make it easier for companies like Fiatera to access this financing. It is crucial to make it easier for companies like ours to continue and grow. This is meaningful both for the companies, but also to ensure that the research funded by the EIC reaches the market in an effective way. The equity funding is matching funding, so we do welcome investors and corporations to co-invest with the EIC to enable Createra and other climate tech companies create the needed revolution in the climate impact of the building material market. Fantastic, Gadatao. On behalf of the AC team, I'd like to thank you for being here with us and telling your story. This is unfortunately all we have time for today, folks. A big thank you to our panelists, Frank and Adatao, for their time today and indeed their efforts in developing these fantastic technologies that could be an answer to our construction challenges. And of course, thank you to all you listeners out there. This brings us to the end of our podcast, part of the series, The Game Changers, From Radical Idea to Innovative Business. Until next time.